Race cars are cool. We should all have a little bit of race car in our lives. With the right mods, you can get a taste of that race car experience every day on your way to work in whatever car you own. This week, I'm covering the best performance mods that'll actually make your car faster and what you'll need to know to avoid trouble along the way. Making your car faster means improving on three principles of vehicle dynamics, handling, braking, and acceleration. They all affect one another and so will all the mods you buy for your car. You'll need to do some planning so that all your mods will work in harmony once you move up that chain of performance upgrades. This way, you won't run into many issues and you can spend more time having fun in your car and you won't be late to work. The best way to start is with an upgrade that improves all three principles at the same time. Coilovers improve handling, braking, and acceleration by keeping your car in a controlled state during aggressive driving, meaning you'll be more planted while launching from a stop, you'll have better weight distribution under braking so your front tires won't take all the load, and your handling will improve by giving you better feel and a lower center of gravity. You get what you pay for with coilovers, and a cheap universal set can do more harm than good. A quality set of coilovers are not only going to drastically increase the performance of your car, they're going to set the pace for the rest of your upgrades. If you're only looking to do one upgrade, coilovers will definitely give you that race car feel. Match that with a set of wider wheels and tires, and the improvements to your car's performance will be even better. But you'll want to consider both before you pull the trigger on that new suspension. Starting from the ground up, your tires are the first point of contact between the car and the road, and they come in a wide range of performance ratings and sizes. So you'll want the suspension to match the performance of the tires. Since we're looking for a taste of that race car experience, you'll want tires that grip the road like Pumphrey grips onto memories of his dad. You can achieve that with a wider tire that has a softer compound to stick to the road. There's many extreme performance tires to choose from, and all of them are gonna give you huge performance advantages in all three driving principles. If your stock wheels don't have many performance tires, higher options, then you can step it up a notch by upgrading your wheels. First off, you're gonna wanna make sure that whatever wheel size you choose has plenty of tire options. So check out your options online before you pull the trigger on your wheel size. Since we're looking for performance, you're gonna wanna make sure you buy something light. Even the smallest weight savings here will give you a noticeable difference in acceleration, handling, and braking. Lowering the weight of rotating mass makes it easier to speed up or slow down that mass. Sorta of like this fidget spinner. Doesn't spin that fast with the weight on it, but once you take out the weight, Oh, mechanic thumbs. As you can see, it's easier to spin without the weights. You probably can't tell, but you can try it out at home and you can see the difference. <laughs> Plus, it's unsprung weight. In other words, it's a part of the car that moves around while you're driving. Weight savings here are exponentially more effective than anywhere else. Lighter suspension components means your car can respond much quicker to steering inputs while under load. Now, picking the size of your wheel depends heavily on the model of your car. The best way to find out which wheel's right for your car is to search the forums and see what everyone else is using. You can save yourself a ton of money and time by learning from everyone else's mistakes. I found my wheels by doing a simple image search of my car and the wheels that I wanted. And not to my surprise, it led me straight to a forum discussing wheel fitment. Turns out, those were the widest possible wheels I could fit on the car. So I sized down a notch to make sure my car wouldn't have any issues with rubbing. And my car still handles like it's on rails. You can make up a lot of time while trying to catch up to someone by consistently braking harder than them. If you really want a big brake kit, then you should check the size of your wheels before you buy them to make sure that those things are gonna fit inside. But you can save money by upgrading the components on your existing brakes. Your stock brakes are generally meant to operate around 100 degrees to 600 degrees. Race pads are made to operate at much hotter temperatures, like 600 to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. So opting for a mixed street race pad will give you the best of both worlds with an operating temperature of 100 degrees to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. It is not recommended to run race pads on the street, but I did it anyway. And let me tell you, those things bit hard, but they squealed like a bus when they were cold, which was all the time, unless I was driving super hard on the track. So if you wanna do racing pads, you're gonna to have to swap them in and out between track days. Of course, you're gonna want some lightweight performance rotors to go with it, so you can cut more weight where it really counts, a performance brake fluid flush to keep your stuff from boiling, and some performance brake lines to go with those pads. Those will keep your brake lines from expanding under heat, which will result in an inconsistent and squishy brake pedal. Upgrading your differential is the most reliable way to make your car accelerate faster in a straight line and through the turns. A limited slip will allow both wheels to move at the same speed when you smash the gas. Perfect for if you're trying to do some sweet drifts. Modding the gear ratio inside that differential can also make your car a lot faster in a reliable way. The ratio you choose will depend on the model of car you have, so check with your new best friends on the forums to find out which one's best for you. Oh, by the way, if you're gonna upgrade that gear ratio, you're gonna wanna pay someone to do it for you because most shops pay another shop to do it for them. That's how difficult it is to work on. 
regardless if you're gonna be shifting gears more frequently due to a tighter gear ratio or not, a short shifter will help you reduce your shift times and make your car noticeably more enjoyable to drive even while you're stuck in traffic. You're going to want a quality one, so don't cheap out here. You'll be using it hundreds of times a day, so you'll appreciate grabbing onto something nice. Modding your engine varies a lot from car to car. Sometimes you can squeeze out a lot of horsepower on the cheap, but more often than not, you're opening up Pandora's box. For most of us, the trickiest mods are those relating to the engine. Yes, you can improve your acceleration with a lot of money and or time invested into your engine. Who knows, you might get lucky and just have a little post-traumatic stress before you're all done. So stick to a basic tune-up and regular oil changes. Cold air intakes, sorry to say, they're a waste of money. Other high dollar upgrades only give you marginal gains and run a big chance of triggering engine codes and causing problems. You're better off spending more money on better quality parts that we already discussed. I'm not saying don't do it, but you're gonna need those previous mods to handle more horsepower anyway. A big horsepower might make you sound fast, but it's all about how you use that horsepower rather than how big your horsepower is. You can have a tiny little horsepower and still beat cars at the track with a very large horsepower. So learn how to drive properly first. Get some practice, take some driving courses, make some mistakes in a safe place so you can become more confident with your car. You don't need any mods to do that. And you're gonna wanna get used to every mod you install after you install it. In instead of going full speed into a brick wall. So take it slow and find your car's sweet spot. After all, you're the one who decides what mod, if any, you need for your car. Tell me about the best mods you've done to your car. What's a mod you've done on your car that didn't do shit? What's one that wasted your money and time? Not talking about your ex-girlfriend. What's your favorite suspension? I don't have one because no one sponsored this video. You really missed out on that one. What kind of suspension do you have on your car? KWs, Olins? Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share. If you guys want donut shirts, if you guys want donut stickers, head to shop.donut.media and I'll see you next Friday.